main sections in this chapter. One of them is by going through two smiths, and the other one is light reflecting from a thin film, a thin film, a thin film that has a front surface and a back surface. All right, and what I'll, what I will do is, I'm gonna give you the results, right? I'm gonna give you the results, and then I wanna show you, if we, if we pick a particular case randomly, I want to show you that the formulas work, okay? But there's something that we need to be told about. And, you know, the, this thing that's mentioned in this particular page, um, to really s understand why this is the case, and I'm just going to flat out just say, uh, we need to write down a mathematical expression for the electromagnetic wave that hits the front surface of the film, and a mathematical expression for the wave that hits the back surface of the film, and then we need to superimpose them, and then um, and then you get this result. Um, so, what's mentioned over here is the following. If See, where's my black? Oh, here it is. If you consider a boundary between two media, let's say n here is, well, I'm just going to say n, suppose n is 1, and here n is 1.33. For example, air and water. And I consider light coming in. This is a light source. And this result is for angles that are very close to 90 degrees. If I consider light coming in this way, let me just imagine that I'm going to imagine a wave coming in like this, right? So that's a wavelength. That's another wavelength. And that's another wavelength. And that's another wavelength. So the wave is traveling this way, right? So this is the plus amplitude, negative amplitude, plus amplitude, negative amplitude, right? So plus, minus. And I, if I could look at it like this, right? So then it's coming this way, right? Now, when it hits this boundary over here, we know that some of the light is going to go back up and the rest of the light is going to go straight through. Yes? The light that goes straight through will just continue. By the way, if I draw this wavelength here as lambda, that's the wavelength of the light in air, let's say lambda zero, what should be the wavelength that I draw over here where the light goes into this medium? Should I draw it longer or should I draw it shorter? In other words, should I draw something like this? Or should I draw something like, you know, longer? Longer or shorter? Longer so that less. Because mm -hmm. it goes slower and has less energy, so it wouldn't be longer. Mm. How is, let's call this medium one and this one number two. So let's call this lambda over here one and the speed of the light over here one. What is the relationship between the frequency of the wave, the wavelength, and the speed of the wave? How is V1 related to lambda 1? Okay, so this would be lambda 1 times the frequency of the light in this medium, right? Now, in this other medium, in water, uh, what is the relationship between the speed of the light in the water and the wavelength of the light in the water. So what's the relationship between the speed and the wavelength? So the speed over here will be 
B2. And how is that related to the wavelength, lambda 2? Or F2. So it would be lambda 2 times the frequency of the light in this medium. But what did we say determines the frequency of a wave? Source. The source, which has nothing to do with air and has nothing to do with the water. So F1 is equal to F2. They're just F. So I'm just going to call it F, and I'm just going to call it F, which is what you said. Yes? In which of the two media? Does light travel more slowly in air or in water? Water. In water. And so if the light travels more slowly in water than in air, and the frequency is the same, what must be true about the wavelength of the light in water? Shorter. It should be? Shorter. Shorter. Right? So what happens is that when I draw the wave over here, it, I should draw something shorter. So the wave goes like that, and then the wavelength over here will be something like this. Shorter. Or, or, another way that I could have answered this question is this. N1 lambda 1 equals N2 lambda 2. 1, 1 to 2. That means that, that, that means that N times lambda is a constant. So if I multiply this index of refraction with this wavelength, I'm going to get a number that's going to be the same as the multiplication of this index of refraction times this wavelength. And since the light went from this medium from low index of refraction to this other medium of high index of refraction, so if I consider this, when the light travels from air into water, the index of refraction went up, and the only way for this product to remain constant is if the wavelength goes down in size. Yes? Okay. But the point is this. This was just a connection with chapter 30, whatever that was. Three or, I don't remember, four, 34 maybe. Um, the point is this. When the light reached the boundary over here, the interface, the surface of the water, right? Notice that it went like this, right? And then boom, and then it started, and then it boom. It just finished the wave. So when it goes through, it starts a new wave. So that's why I just went, you know, as if there was nothing in there. I, all I did was I just changed the wave and I just made it shorter. So when the light is transmitted from one medium into another medium, coming in very close to the normal, then the light just, you know, it's coming in and it just goes through. It's just that the wavelength gets shorter. Now, what happens to the reflected light? So instead of drawing the wave going back up over here, I'm just going to move this point over here. So we see it over here. So now the light is going to go that way, right? So now I want to draw this like, you know, if I draw it like this, this is like, plus the amplitude, minus the amplitude, plus the amplitude, minus the amplitude, because the light is going this way, right? Like in this case, that's plus the amplitude, minus, plus, minus, maximum, minimum, maximum, minimum, so on. Now, when the light reflects from this medium of low index of refraction, where the light travels fast, to this medium of higher index of refraction, where the light travels more slowly, See, the light, you would think, oh, when, it, when, the, when the wave reached this point, right? Plus amplitude zero, negative amplitude zero. You say it wants to start a new wave. So you say the wave wants to start like this, like a new wave up, plus, it wants to do this. Plus, minus, and it's coming this way, plus. So it wants to do that. But without proving it, when the light travels, from, or when the light reflects from a surface such that the light in this medium travels fast, which means low in this refraction, to this medium, which is slow, the light loses half a wavelength. It's like the light wants to start like this, but it loses or gains. You can either take the point of view that it gains or that it loses half a wavelength. So the way that the light actually reflects 
is it wants to do this, but it does the opposite. It goes actually like this, and then up, and then like this. So it goes this way. Same speed, same frequency, same wavelength, right? It looks longer than that one, but it's the same wavelength. Uh, lambda one. But uh, now this is minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, and so on. So I'm stating this without proving it. There's a way to prove it, but we have to write down an expression for this electromagnetic wave, for the electric field of this electromagnetic wave, an expression for the electric field of this electromagnetic wave, an electric field for this electromagnetic wave, and then we have to meet what are called boundary conditions. We write down the total electric field over here, which is the electric field of the incident wave plus the electric field of the reflected wave, and it has to match the electric field in the transmitted medium. And then you know we impose some conditions over there, and then you end up with the electric field of the instant wave being in the opposite direction to the electric field of the reflected wave as it comes off. So I'm just not doing that proof. Okay? But the result is this. So this is when the light travels from low to high. On the other hand, if the light travels from, let's say, high in this refraction to low in this refraction, from slow to fast, the light comes in so suppose it comes in like this, right? So plus, minus, I'll put the minus like this, plus, minus, plus, minus. It's coming in like this, D1, say. Say this is N1 and this is N2. And when it goes through, it's going to be traveling faster, but it, again, there's no phase shift upon transmission. It just continues, right? So it goes like this. Not interested in the transmission. Now, when you consider the reflected wave, the one that goes back up, when it travels from high to slow, to high, from high industrial refraction to low industrial refraction, from slow to fast, uh, it doesn't lose half a wavelength. It doesn't gain half a wavelength. It just reflects as if there was nothing there. So notice that coming in, right? It, Plus amplitude, zero, negative amplitude, zero. So it starts a new wave, So, but now it's going that way. So it does, in fact, start a new wave, and it goes like this. So as it goes that way, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. So if you consider the incident wave and the reflected wave, there is no phase This one there but in case. this case, the phase shift, notice that it lost half a wavelength. And half a wavelength, a distance of half a wavelength corresponds to, corresponds to what angle? 180 degrees, or pi radians. So between these two, there's a phase shift of pi radians, or 180 degrees. So I'm saying that without proving it. So I say here, for normal incidence, normal doesn't mean like it's common or you know not abnormal. Normal incidence just means coming in pretty much along the normal. That, that's what normal incidence means. It doesn't mean like that, that person is normal and that other one is abnormal. Not in that context, right? It's just normal incidence means coming along the normal. Um, so for normal incidence, an electromagnetic wave undergoes a phase change of 180 degrees. Mm -hmm. When does that happen? Well, the, the phase change is between the reflected wave and the incident wave. But only when it travels from low industrial refraction to high industrial refraction. A phase change of 180 degrees upon reflection from a medium of higher index, from this medium of higher index, than the medium in which it was traveling, than this one. So from low to high. I'm kind of can. I think it's the two arrows that are confusing me. So the if there two was no. Arrows? So yeah, there's like you have and one, this one. Yeah, that one so and the one next to it. If there is no phase shift, 
I should say, sorry, thank you for the phase shift is between, is between these two. Because this is how it wants, like if there's no phase shift, this is how it would reflect. Oh, okay. But this is not what happened. This, that's what I think I said. Okay. I, I, I was because I, I should like, have crossed it out. I was like, it looks the same as the no, one over there. And no, you're, you're you're right. Thank you. I just I just wanted to show you why it would go like this because it loses this. Okay. So it's like it's like this point gets transferred to here. So then it starts like that. But then that point has to be here. So that's what I did over here. Okay. So I'm just stating that without proving it. Um, now, what about thin film interference? So now I'm gonna use this for the board over here. So once you just accept this, are aware of it, um, then these problems tend to be simple. Well, let me tell you why it's, in general, simple. to media and light comes in this is the light source and light comes in at an angle let's say uh, but we're really going to consider roughly normal incidence it's just that I'm gonna draw like that because I I want you to see what, what it is but it, this is supposed to be normal incidence or very close to the normal now when the light travels from this medium I'm gonna say suppose it travels from low N to high N. Well, regardless of whether it goes from low to high or high to low, there will be a reflected beam, right? The angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. And then there will be a transmitted beam. In this case, I made it high, so I'm just going to go like this. And then, uh, let's say this is an even higher in the refraction beam. And then the light is going to come in, part of it is going to reflect, and the rest is going to go through. Yes. And the one that was reflected at the back surface, right, the ball here, some of it is going to go back this way, reflect, but then the rest is going to go through. So the thing in the middle is the film. So this is the film. And the index of refraction of the film is NF. So there's some medium over here, some other medium there, and some other medium over here. You could have air, water, and glass. Maybe you have a drop of water on a piece of glass, a light is shining from air, right? Coming in from air, hits the water, and then after hitting the front surface of the water, hits the back surface of the water where the water meets the glass. So the thing in between is the film. And let's say that the thickness of the film, just the thickness, is T, F. No, not just T, let's just call it T. It's the thickness of the film. T for thickness. Now, the question is, if I collect, if I collect this incident, well, this reflection from the top surface of the film, and I combine it with the other reflection from the other surface of the film. So if I collect these two, let's say with a lens, and I bring them to a focus, and I combine them here, when they combine over there, will I get a bright spot or will I get a dark spot? Will they arrive in phase or will they arrive 180 degrees out of phase? If these are sound waves, will it be loud or will it be silent? Light waves, bright or dark? So I'll just say bright. 
or dark. But notice what it is that I'm combining. Light comes in, reflects from the front surface of the film, the rest goes through, reflects from the back surface of the film, and it may go through the rest, but the light that came from the back surface of the film, this reflected light at the second surface, and this reflected light from the first surface, then they are combined. And the question is, when you combine those two, will it be bright or dark? Bright or dark. So, um, there are four cases. Case number one, I'll call it A, and case number two will be this. You have a film. I think this marker is having it. This is the light source. So what if this is low in the solar fraction, going to high, sorry, I'm gonna make this high. Going to low, going to even lower. Okay, and the thing in the middle, that's the film. The thickness of it is T. And you have light coming in, hits, part of it reflects, and the rest goes through, goes down, back up, goes through, I don't care which way, and then it goes this way. Collect them, boom, bright or dark. Now, it will be bright or dark depending on various things. And the nice thing about it is that the formulas for bright and the formula for dark is the same for both of these cases. So for constructive interference, which means bright maximum, interference, I think I wrote that correctly. The result is that twice the thickness is equal to M times the wavelength of the light in the film. That's for bright. And for destructive interference, which would be for the dark one, two t is m plus a half lambda in the film, and I tend to call that m prime. I think you can call it m, or I'll just call it m. Let's see what I, I just called it m over here. Where, in both of these cases, M can be zero, one, two, three, four, five, blah, blah, blah. Zero or a positive integer. Now, in other words, when you're solving a problem, Hopper problem, quiz problem, test problem, you look at the indices of refractions. If it goes from low to high to even higher, or if it goes from high to low to even lower, and the question has to do with dark spots, you use this formula. If the question has to do with bright spots, you use this one. What are the words that mean bright? Maximum, bright, loud, in phase, they all mean bright. Uh, reinforcement. What are the ones that mean dark? Darkness, silence if it's sun waves, minimum, 
cancellation, 180 degrees out of phase, they all mean dark. So, now, when you solve the problem, if the problem happens to be one of these problems now, so the thing in the middle is the film, the index of refraction is NF, the thickness is T, it's the same thickness, right? I mean, T, T, T stands for the same thing. And now, if you have a low index of refraction, high index of refraction, but then low index of refraction, and you have light coming in, reflects, goes through, up, flats, Collected to the reflected from the front and back surfaces of the film, combine over here, bright or dark. And D. What if you have this? What am I missing? What is the only other, what is the only other possibility? Can you tell me? Can you see a pattern in here? I'll go to red. What should this be? Exactly. And the one in the middle is the film. And that is the film. And uh, the thickness is T. And here's the light source. Light goes in, goes out, goes down, flex, flex again, goes that way, goes through. And uh, you collect these two, boom, 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 bright or dark. And if the problem that you're solving is one of these two, then the formula that you use for the bright spots, constructive interference, is 2t equals m plus a half lambda in the film. It becomes the one for dark for the other two cases. They switch. And for destructive interference, 2t equals m lambda in the film, where m can be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on. So, if you're solving any one of these problems, this or that, and the question has to do with bright spots, you use this formula. If the question has to do with dark spots, you use this formula. And the values of the indices of refraction, you know, all that matters is that it either increases or decreases. So for example, I'll just put in some numbers randomly. This could be, this n could be one, this could be 1.2, and this could be 1.3. It went from low to high to even higher. This one could be 1.5, this could be 1.3, and this could be one. It went from high to low to even lower. This could be one, this could be 1.3, and this could be 1.2. It went from low to high, but then it went back to low, because 1.2 is lower than 1.3. And this might be 1.5, this might be 1.3, and this might be 1.4. It went from high to low, and then from low it went back to high. So, whether the light that reflects from the front surface of the film and the light that reflects from the back surface of the film, when they recombine, there are Three things that matter, whether they will combine constructively or destructively. One is when the light comes in and reflects, is there a phase shift between the incident and the reflected wave? Is there a phase shift at the front surface? Let's do one at a time. So is there a phase shift between this reflection and this incident wave, traveling from low to high, yes or no? Actually, that's a yes. yes, and 180 degrees. What about the reflection from the second surface, from high to even higher? Yes. 
Yes. So the, the phase shift between these two is 180 degrees. What about over here? Trying from high to low. Is there a phase shift between the incident and the outgoing? No. What about from the second reflection? It's going from low to even lower. No. No? No? Yes? Yes. What about here? Low to high. Is there a phase shift between this and that? Yes. Of 180 degrees, right? What about the second surface? It's running from high to lower. So, no. So, no? Yes. And what about this one? It goes from high to low. Is there a phase shift between these two, this and that? And what about this one, going from low to high? Of pi, right? So notice that for these two formulas, the same thing happens at the first reflection as in the second reflection. Here, there was a phase shift, but there was also a phase shift at the second surface. In this case, there was no phase shift at the top, but there was also no phase shift at the bottom. So these are the formulas that apply. In this case, something happened in the first reflection, but nothing in the second reflection. While in this one, something didn't happen at the top surface, but something happened in the second surface. So what matters is that it happens to one of them, but not to the other one. But that's not the entire story. So it matters. Is there a phase shift at the first surface between the incident and reflected waves? Is there a phase shift at the second surface between the incident and the reflected wave? But what else matters? The ones that we were doing with the two slits and light going through them to the screen, what mattered if they were bright or dark? Uh, path that path length difference. So it matters how far this is going to go down. And by the way, what is the path length difference? between the two waves that reflect, that I collect, reflected right from the front and back surfaces and meet over there. What's the extra distance that one wave travels relative to the other one? Remember, this is nearly normal incidence. What is it? Uh, significant difference. Almost. Twice. Twice. Because this wave, for example, comes in and reflects. Now, the extra, this, you know, this is nearly normal incidence. They're very close to one another. This is a thin film. We're talking, we're talking microns in general. So the extra distance, so, so from here on, they, they travel pretty much the same distance. The extra distance that one wave travels relative to the other one is going down a thickness T and going back up a thickness T. That's why you have a 2T over here. That's where the 2 comes from. Because this is an expression for the path length difference between them. So these expressions include the effect that the thickness of the film is going to have on whether it will be bright or dark. And it also takes into account whether there was a phase shift between the incident and reflected wave at the top and the incident and reflected wave at the bottom. At the bottom meaning the second surface of the film. So let me check one of them. So I need three different people. Let me double check these equations. So we have case A, case B, case C, case D. So who wants to pick a case? Pick A, B, C, or D. One of you. A. A. Simple. Oh, maybe not. Okay, so we have case A. Next. Somebody else. Do you want bright or dark? Dark. Dark. And somebody else. What value of M do you want? Three. Three. Okay. All right, so let's check. Here's the top surface. 
and so this is the film. Okay, fakeness T. Now, for this choices, I want this case. You said dark, so we want this formula, and n is three. So therefore, two T equals three point five lambda in the film, right? That's the formula, right? So 2t equals 3.5 lambda in the film. So that means that the thickness will be 3.5 divided by 2 is what? 1, one and 3 quarters? 1.75 lambda in the film. So this thickness will be 1.75 wavelengths of the light in the film. So when I draw the wave inside the film, I gotta go down one and three quarters of a wavelength and go back up one and three quarters of a wavelength. Okay? Are you ready for this? Okay, so I'm gonna think of the source here. So this is the light source. All right, so here's the wave. Right, so suppose I draw like this. One, doesn't matter what, how far it's been coming from there. This is plus, minus, plus, minus. It's coming this way. Now, when it goes through, is there a phase shift between the incident and the transmitted wave? Yes. No. It's only on the reflected, and it depends on whether, whether it goes from low to high or high to low. And I didn't write that. You want a case A that's low, high, higher. So this is low, high. So upon transmission, if you remember what I wrote before, it just goes straight through as if there's nothing in there, right? So I'm just gonna go like this. So it's just gonna start a new wave, and how many wave lengths should I draw from here to here? One and three quarters, right? So let's do that. It'll be one and a half and a quarter. Plus, minus, plus, minus, right? The wave is coming this way. Yes or no? Right? If you draw a wave like this, right? If I start over here, a full wavelength is up to here. That's lambda, right? Half a wavelength is this. So three quarters is this. It's from the, um, from zero to plus amplitude to the negative amplitude. That's three quarters of a wave. So I went one and a half and a quarter. So 1.75. Yes? Now let's consider the reflections. Okay, so let me consider the reflection at the top surface first of the film. Is there a phase shift? Yes. yes. So how does this wave want to reflect? How does it want to reflect? It wants to reflect, when it got to this point, it finished a wavelength and it wants to start a new one. So it wants to start like this, right? That's how it wants to start. You know, plus, minus, plus, minus. Going this way. But because there is a phase shift, it loses this. So this is not what happens. Instead, what happens is this. I have to shift all of this back down so that this point starts over here. So that this will be like this. So this is minus, plus, minus, plus, right? Going this way. Yes or no? Yes. Okay, so now let's do the reflection at the bottom surface. So, now, what about this one? I'm gonna shift it over here. So I'm gonna go like this, right? So, this is like the negative amplitude, this is the positive amplitude, right? So, is there a phase shift between the instant wave coming down this way and the reflected wave going back up? Yes, because it's going from high to even higher in this refraction. So, this wave would like to start at the negative amplitude 
it would like to start at the negative amplitude, like this, and go to the plus amplitude, right? Like this. It wants to start like this, minus, plus, minus. But it loses half a wavelength. So from here to where is half a wavelength? This is a quarter, and this is another quarter, so it loses all of this. That's a quarter, and that's a quarter. That's half a wavelength. And it loses that. In other words, what really happens is, let me put it over here instead. So this is not what happens because it loses half a wavelength. So I have to start it with having lost this half a wavelength, start it at the, over here. So I have to start over here at the plus amplitude. It's going to go this way. That's plus. Now, it has to travel back up how far? 1.75. This is a quarter of a wavelength. This is half a wavelength. Right? It's going up this way. So half a wavelength, a quarter of a wavelength. So I, I need to put in here one full wavelength, right? So I'm going to go like two, one full wavelength, right? Plus, minus. And then it goes out. And when it goes up, it just goes straight through, right? So like this. Now, what do you notice? When they recombine, from here on, I'm recombining this two over here, right? That's the lens, for example. They go like that, they go like that, and then they meet. Notice that this goes up while this goes down. So they'll cancel each other out. I'm going to get dark, which is what we have. So, I mean, you know, we just randomly picked one case, A, B, C, or D, brought a dark, randomly, and one value of M. And one of you said case A, somebody else said dark, and somebody else said three. And we just tested that. And I've shown that these formulas are good. The nice thing about these problems is that um, you can solve these problems in one minute. Because this, this is not like an integral you have to solve by parts or a, a second order partial differential equation, you know, some two equations, two unknowns, you know, with, with a lot of algebra. These are just, you just have to know what, you know, what value of m based on the question, right? What value of M to choose? Uh, is it bright or is it dark? And by looking, just by looking at the numbers of the values of the indices of refraction, then it's gonna be one of these cases. Any, any problem with a film, with a thin film, is gonna be either this, this, that, or that. If you say, well, this, what, if, what if this is equal to that? Well, if this is equal to that, then you don't have a film. I mean, you don't have a boundary. It's the same medium. It's just that and that. Right? So, um, So these problems tend to be short, which is good. Very quickly, you, you do it. Uh, I'm just going to randomly pick one problem from the textbook, read it to you, and show you how it is that I solve the problem. OK, I think I have uh, some. OK, so. Um, let's see. You can see that. So let's go here. Uh, let's choose one of the problems. This is 35. Is this chapter 35 we're, we're on? I'm sorry, I... Okay, so let's see. How about... Now 
one is a little complicated. That one is just like for fun. I mean, they're just like, how about we do 26? Can I erase all of this now? Can I erase all of this? So, how would I approach problem number 26? Does anyone have it, or if not, I'll go to my office and get a copy of the textbook and read it. <laughs> 